Hello and welcome to GG Mars Hill, where I play good games all day, every day I'm your host Mars Hill and today I'm actually doing a tutorial, a tutorial for open broadcasting software OBS. The reason I'm doing this tutorial is because I know a few of you guys have been asking what sort of settings I use for YouTube and uh, also what sort of settings I have been using for my streaming. So to start off with, we're going to begin with my local recording profile at 60 frames per second. So you click on settings at the bottom here and it brings up this window here. This where it allows you to set up your, basically the quality of your recordings, how you want, it's just all the various settings that allows you to change the quality and how, how just depending on the hardware that you have. Uh, so we'll begin with the general tab here at the top. This allows you to set up a profile uh, depending on whether you're streaming or local recording. So this is a local recording one here. So we'll just move on to encoding. So video encoding, you have three buttons here. One's grayed out for me because this is not available for my computer. You've got the Times 264 or X264 encoder or what I'm actually using for local recording which is the NVIDIA NVEC encoder. The reason I have this available is because I have got a GTX 970 uh, NVIDIA graphics card and I find this really does work really well for local recording, really good good high quality recordings, smooth, non-juttery, uh, jittery sorry and uh, yeah so that's what I've got selected here. Um, in terms of these settings around here, I uh, use constant bit rate, I've got that unticked or should it be ticked? No, have it unticked and then you use a quality that enables the quality balance bit here. So if I hover over there, it says the quality this setting will attempt to target a certain quality depending on your bitrate and buffer size. Setting this to a high value will with a low bitrate will sacrifice um, the quality of high motion scenes in favour of non-moving scenes causing inconsistent quality. So you really want to have a max a really high bitrate if you're going to use a high quality balance. Um, this is greyed out because this is not ticked and I also have this disabled here so you really just want to look at these two settings here. This is what I found out from just trial and error and finding out the best sort of like recording um, settings for myself in terms of the video section. Um, in audio encoding, encoder I use is um, AAC and the format is at 48 kilohertz whatever that means I just know it sounds pretty good and the bitrate is at 320 with the channel setting at stereo. So that's the settings for the encoding bit. If we move on to broadcast settings, no I do not want to change anything there. Broadcast settings, you can either live stream or file output, so select our file output if you want to do a local recording and then set the file path of where you want your recordings to go to. So you can simply click on browse, this is my folder here with some local recordings I've managed to do. Yeah, I think that one there I'll be working on to actually provide onto my YouTube channel. You guys will find out at some point what that is. Uh, replay, replay buffer length, don't even know what I'm using for that. And replay buffer file path, don't even don't even use this bit here, so I have no idea what this is for. Uh, don't think it's that important, it's just these two bits here, knowing where your saved recordings are actually going to go, because that'd be useful if you want to do anything with them. So click on the video tab here. So this is where you're able to select your video adapter. My video adapter is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. You may have some others in here if you've actually got two graphics cards or if you've got integrated graphics. And in the resolution section here, I use my beta custom. Don't know why it's on custom, but yeah, 1920 by 1080 and aspect radio ratio of 16.9. I think if you change this, it will change the aspect ratio as well. Um, this is good if you want this is the sort of setting you want for YouTube. Um, I know this is just a 1080p recording, but if you want to lower it, you can either change it here or set it to your monitor and change your um, was it your screen resolution that way, and then it'll just copy what your monitor's at. Uh, then you have the resolution downscale, so you can actually play the game in 1920 by 1080. Uh, but if you want to have like a 720p so like quality video, you could downscale it to 1280 by 720 When you do that, it then allows you to change the filter. Uh, Lancazos being the best. If I just change it to that just for you guys to see. You've got bilinear, which is the fastest filter. Bicubic sharper. Uh, good detail at 16 samples, and this one's 36. But if you've got a good enough computer, you can just record at 
your um, base resolution or your host resolution just leave that as it is and then you can change the frame rates in this bit here so I recorded 60 frames per second because I, I just think it makes it so smooth when you watch it back on YouTube and it's quite nice so yeah that's the setting that we have there moving on to the audio tab no don't want to change anything uh, you want your desktop audio device the device that basically produces the sound from your computer so for any in-game sounds music etc as you want to select it to your um, your device that allows sound to go come through your speakers so speakers real tech high definition audio is mine and the microphone this uh, auxiliary audio device or microphone if you want to record your voice you set that to the microphone the name of your microphone here stereo mix is actually what is is another device that records or produces the sound that's coming from inside your computer so I normally use that if I want to play music through TeamSpeak for example uh, you could just out that from your TeamSpeak and so on and then uh, just uh, make, make a duke box of your laptop or something like that for other people to listen but yeah enough about that so yeah you want to set that to your microphone um, push to talk delay yeah don't really use these desktop boost no yeah so you can actually boost your microphone or um, so desktop this one here you can boost the sound of the the audio by how many times so that's one or you can set it to two I think it's times two and then etc for the microphone you can set that to one two two point five etc and it just boosts the um, the sound depending on which device you want to increase the output of audio on we move on to hotkeys no, no more changes uh, you can change your audio from your microphone to push to talk and then you can set a key as to what you want to use as your push to talk button and then there's your broadcast settings here. You can actually bind a key on your keyboard, which allow you to record locally and stop recording locally. So I use F9, and you can do the same for your streaming profile as well. F9, start and stop. So moving on to the advanced, uh, this is where it goes a little bit beyond my own realm of knowledge. This is what I've, I've actually just had a look at other YouTube videos, uh, and I've just come to. A general consensus from using all their tips and tricks to find what's best for me and a little bit of trial error as well so in the general section here that um, if you've got multi-thread you know if you've got a multi multi-core processor you want you to enable your um, multi-threaded optimizations I don't think I can even think of any modern day CPUs that don't have more than one core um, process priority class I have set on normal you can set that higher depending on how much of a beast your computer is uh, scene buffering time that just um, the delay between switching on scenes on the OBS screen I'll show that at the very end on how, the, how you actually set up scenes on your, on your computer on OBS sorry um, I, I don't really know what these are for so I've just left those at default um, onto the video section here because I'm using the NVENC, NVENC preset or how you pronounce that you've actually got a whole load of different presets on the quality another quality like sub region I suppose so um, I use blu-ray discs I know blu-ray discs are superb quality and I want my local recordings to be superb quality for my YouTube uh, and you want the encoding profile to be set to high um, keyframe interval set to zero and use constant frame rate that's really important if you want a good quality constant framed video where it's not jumping up and down in frames you just want to set to 60 and then jobs are good these here don't really use these don't know what they are for I guess this means you can record at a higher frame rate I guess that's if you want to record like movies uh, like frag montages where you want to be able to do slow mos and so on and audio left that at default and network I've just got automatic low latency mode tick not too sure what that does hover my cursor over that no there's no um, tool tip and whatnot uh, quick sync encoder I'm not using the quick sync um, encoder so I really don't know how you use this I suggest you look at some other YouTube videos on YouTube obviously um, which then can talk about how you can enable the quick sync encoder through your BIOS and then choosing the best settings here for local or streaming so local recording or streaming depending on what you're doing and these three here not too sure I haven't really gone into depth with these three but browser don't really use it for local recording noise gate microphone noise gate this basically allows you to set it where the microphone will start recording your voice and when and the cutoff point where it'll stop recording so it cuts out constant background noises and ambient noise from your room so it's a more immersive experience for your people watching your videos and then the scene switcher this is this would be really good for Twitch streaming 
or just streaming in general where where you want to instead of having to alt tab and change the scene depending on what vin window you're looking at on your computer whether it's in game or you've come to the desktop it'll, sw it'll switch the scene depending on what you you are looking at on your computer and um, I haven't really set up for my stream because it's far easier for me just to click and switch um, because I haven't got like I don't really alt tab that much to be fair but no so that's for the local recordings um, we want to do the streaming setup, so I'm setting, I'm loading up my stream profile. We'll go into the coding game. For the video encoding, I use the um, X264 encoder. I find this is really good for streaming. The NVIDIA, Nvidia NVEC, for some reason there's a huge delay and it causes a lot of lag. On my end, it's probably because I don't know how to set up properly for streaming, but I find the X264 encoder is really good for streaming online. Uh, you want to use constant bitrate and enable CBR padding, constant bitrate padding, and you want, well, for myself, I use 3,000 kilobytes per second. Uh, generally, the, the good range you want to be between, I think, is 1,750 to 2,500 for at least 720p quality streaming. Uh, I use 3000 just to filter out all that fuzziness uh, that you occasionally see when th the screen's moving when I'm playing Total War Arena or other fast-paced fast, fast games. Sorry for the stuttering there. Um, and audio encoding, same as before, except I changed the bitrate to 160, uh, just so as the quality of the stream is smooth and enjoyable for those watching. If we go to the broadcast settings, you want to set your mode from file output only to live stream and then you are able to change what streaming service you're using and also through what server, in, in case of Twitch, what server you want to stream through. I've got on Paris because London wasn't working for you, kept getting an error and also I got the same error with uh, Frankfurt. But yeah, if you get the errors, just switch between your region, whether it's US, EU, Asia, everywhere, wherever. Um, auto reconnect is quite good because if you're sitting there streaming away and you don't realise you've disconnected and it's only a quick little disconnect, you want it to come back on quickly um, and that's the time out there where how long it'll take for it to reconnect or how long it'll take before it gives up reconnecting so 10 seconds is quite good. Minimise network impact, that's quite good as well so the impact on your internet I suppose, I guess that's what it means, I'm not too sure, don't take my word for it uh, file path. This here, this section here. If you want to actually save your stream to a file while you're actually streaming, and then you can set the location, etc. But I generally just take my saved recordings from my past broadcasts on my Twitch profile if I need them, and I just export them to YouTube and then download them from my YouTube. Uh, we go on to the video section. Um, yeah, video adapter yet again. Whatever video card or graphics card you're using, resolution. Uh, the thing that I've actually changed on this, I've changed the resolution downscale to only 720p quality, so 1280 by 720. Yeah, again, it's easier for viewers to watch it. There's no stuttering. There's not. You don't have to actually pump through a huge amount of uh, megabytes of video data through to the Twitch service and then if you've got people who haven't got brilliant internet they're not actually going to be able to watch you because it'll just be constantly buffering for them. Uh, filter I have on Bilinear which is the fastest one so it's not the it's not the nicest looking but at least everyone can watch it and then FPS I have set to 30 because you don't really need 60 FPS when you're streaming unless of course you're playing Counter-Strike or another first person shooter game you want to set to 60 but you will need a beast uh, beastly um, a good good internet and you got to know that your your followers and your viewers are actually going to be able to watch at 60 frames per second uh, and not have any buffering issues on their end audio same again no no differences here hotkeys I don't use them I just manually start my stream but yeah again you can play with this yourselves advanced so nothing has changed as much uh, that much here general so use multi-thread op optimizations Priority class normal, scene buffering time 600, allow other modifiers, so I've got, yeah, so default this section here, I haven't really changed this bit. Video, um, X264 CPU preset, set to very fast, encoding profile main, uh, keyframe interval, this is very important for Twitch because this, they, they, you know, if you change this to anything else, they're not happy with it. If you look on your dashboard on Twitch, if you have this set anything else, you'd be like, oh god, this is wrong. I think if I set this to 1 or, no, I don't know. Sometimes you'll get a message down here telling you that this is the wrong setting. It needs to be changed, or in the broadcast settings at least. 
Uh, you also want to use constant frame rate yet again. Um, don't really want to change anything here. Same as here, same as before, and here, same as before, nothing changed. Quicksick encoder, don't really use it at all, so I'm not too sure how you would need to set this up for your online streaming. Yet again, have a look at other YouTube videos, I'll probably post some links in the bottom. Uh, for you guys to have a look at if you want quick sync second settings. Uh, browser not used, microphone noise gate, same as before with local recording. Set Just set it up up to the point where the microphone will pick up your voice uh, when you want to be heard and also cut off if you don't want any uh, ambient noise in your room to be heard. And then scene switch, I haven't set this up yet but obviously when I become a, you know, have a bit more time I'll set this up properly so it will scene switch between playing games and when I'm just chilling out and you guys you know the, then it's not just a frozen game that you're looking at it's actually switched to a different more interactive video window or whatnot but no yes it's up to you guys you have a look at other tutorials for this bit here on how to set it up I might actually uh, produce a tutorial for my, myself if I ever get to using this but no that's um that's pretty much it for the settings part. Um, we're gonna have a look at scenes and uh, and also the sources you can put in the scene. So I'll start. These are all the scenes I use for the various games. So this is my local recording chroma. So it's got my chroma key settings for my for my screen behind me. I guess I could do a chroma key tutorial video as well. I'll probably stick all this in another video to be fair, because that's a lot to go through on how you want to set all this up. Because if you look, I've got loads of stuff in here for uh, Twitch alerts in each one. But no, I hope you guys, um, before I end this video, I'm going to just show you these two videos that should be coming up on your screen now. Uh, be sure to click on these if you want to see what the video, th this is from local recordings, recent ones. So these are the, from the settings I've been using with OBS and you can see what sort of quality the games are like. And um, yeah, so if you check those out, if you've got any questions, please post it in the comments below. And um like and subscribe and share this video if you have enjoyed it and if you know anyone else who needs help with this sort of software and actually putting together something and setting up their own local recording and also streaming for themselves but no this is gg miles hill signing out for now hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next time ciao for now bye